Hello? Hello? Okay, Derek? Hi there, Rebecca, can you hear me? I can, can you hear me? Awesome, I got you. All Eric, right. Can you hear me? Sorry to everybody who's listening. We're still trying to work out a couple of glitches here. Life with technology. Derek, can you hear me? All right. Before we get started, um, I'm seeing that we've got about 135 and climbing folks in the room, which is completely awesome. If you can hear me, um, let's just do the once you see five or 10 of these, just stop. But if we can get a quick um, confirmation that other folks can hear me, I know Rebecca can. Derek seems to be having trouble with his uh, connection. Hello. Hi, Derek. I hear you now. Okay. I had the sound back in. Rebecca, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Great. All okay. right. I'm sending a message right now. Um, Unfortunately, because of the number of people we have, I'm saying this to the to the rest of the audience. And I could turn on my computer, so I prove I'm a human. Um, because of the number of people we have, we had to uh, go to a, um, a process that doesn't let us, you know, have everybody talk. So, if you can hear me speaking, please 
put a note in the chat box. <laughs> or you might want to do people who can't hear you. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, I got a whole bunch of people popping in right now. I'm still waiting to hear if, so we've got a ton of people who are popping online. Uh, take a look. Um, you might see some, some friendly names, even if you're not seeing their faces here. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting to make sure that folks can hear. If you can hear me, um, I know there's a delay on the notes, but we had a little bit of confusion. So if you can let me know that you can hear me, I see a, sounds good, I can hear you fine. Um, if anybody could not, all right, it looks like we're good. Um, if anybody, oh my gosh, I'm seeing all these names that I haven't seen for forever and a day. This is kind of fun. Um, so for the, uh, sorry, I'm going to adjust my computer here a little bit. They're all big in the screen all of a sudden. Um, so for the folks who, great, you got it. If, if you feel like you need to tell me you can hear me, you don't need to tell me anymore. I think we're good. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is, you know, it's a bizarre time for all of us. It's a scary time, it's an exciting time, but um, you know, there is, there is a bright light in being able to get to talk amongst us today. So with that, Derek, I'm gonna hand it over to you if you wanna say a couple of introductory things, and then I'll pop up the, uh, the, the presentation. Okay, well, yeah, I guess you can go ahead and get that popped up if you want. Um, but uh, my name is Derek. My name is Derek Peebles with Amoeba, and I want to welcome everyone who um, took time out of their day to join us on the call today. Um, we do have an agenda ready for you all. This is going to be a one-hour-long phone call, and of course, the reason you all know probably why we're here. Uh, we're dealing with a crisis right now that has uh, really deeply impacted. Uh, the local economies and local business communities. And so, you know, our big thing is to gather and form coalitions so we can uh, fight for you all during this rough time. And so uh, I took over the American Independent Business Alliance last July. And so for the first six months into this role, I have been uh, primarily in transition I am located in Cincinnati, Ohio, where Della is also located, and I will um, turn it over to her in a second so she can introduce herself and uh, her background. But um, yes, yeah, so during this time, uh, I've been primarily working on forming collaborations and moving Amoeba into a new direction around how we can support local economies. And so, uh, prior to me serving um, as executive director, I served on the board for about three or four years. And I worked on um, one of my bigger projects was working on our uh, diversity and inclusion campaign that we did a couple of years back. And so we're here today and we're going to talk about, you know, some resources that have come down the pipeline that we have learned about. And, you know, our main goal is to form a community. And so, you know, this is not going to be the um, one and only call that we have. We hope to learn a lot from you all uh, along this process that would allow us to put toolkits together. And so we're also working with partners on forming uh, recommendations and policies uh, to the federal government. And so there's really a lot of things to touch on. And so um i'll but before we get started i will turn it over to della and we also have rebecca melanchon i hope i said that correctly um who will be presenting later on in the uh program or in the presentation we have for you all 
but just to let you all know, the software that we're using allows us to have two presenters, but we actually have Rebecca on who's going to be talking a little bit as well. And many of you all may already know her from the Austin Independent Business Alliance. And so Della, after you give your introduction, um, let's go ahead and uh, let Rebecca give an introduction as well. Sure. Even though I know her sure. picture is not up on the slide right now, but um, uh, we do have her picture at the end of the presentation. So, um, we do. so we yeah. Do. Go ahead. Great, thanks Derek. Um, so yeah, so so for some of you, I'm probably unknown, and for some of you, um, I'm known for far longer than any of us want to admit. Uh, I'm Della Rucker. I describe myself anymore as a uh, community revitalization specialist, and if I'm feeling particularly excited, a community futurist. So I'm. I have worked in historic preservation. I've worked in urban planning. I've worked in economic development, and uh, my focus over the last several years has really been the question of how to help communities become more resilient. So among other things that I have been working on over uh, the last couple of years, um, one of those has been helping Amoeba to, um, to, to make this pivot that Derek's gonna talk about, which, which aligns with a lot of things that I cared about that, that some of you have been hearing from me for years. Um, and when Derek asked me to, to help out, long before, or at least somewhat before we knew what a COVID was, um, I was really, really happy to do so. So um, I'm really glad to see so many familiar names and uh, to meet some new folks as well. Rebecca, you wanna give us a super quick Sure. Um, happy to be here. I'm Rebecca Melanson, a uh, good South Louisiana name, but hard to pronounce, I recognize. And um, I'm the executive director of the Austin Independent Business Alliance and a board member of Amoeba. I was one of the founders of AIBA uh, 19 years ago. So we're one of the oldest independent business alliances in the country but have been a localist for all my life and am very excited to be with this group at this time. It's a hugely difficult time, which we all know, but we can make a difference. And today we're gonna to talk about how we can do that. Awesome, thanks. Derek? So uh, yes, you know, so since I have been executive director, <laughs> um, I've been happy to have Rebecca uh, join our board of directors. And like Rebecca or like uh, Della said, um, I've been working with uh, Della for years now. And so as you all know, we're now located in Cincinnati, Ohio. And so for those of you who don't know, we have been located in Bozeman, Montana, where the co-founders of Amoeba um, were um, located and where they operated from. And so, um, Going into, for those of you who don't know who we are, we have, from what I've seen on the list, over 300 people that signed up for this call. And uh, so I know there's many of you that are maybe not familiar with what Amoeba does, but uh, simply, we build a stronger local economy movement by supporting the growth and development of local business alliances and organizations. And so we do a lot of work with, um, uh, starting IBAs, that's been historically what we've done. And um, we have primarily have been the leader in supporting uh, consumer education and promoting consumer education through bi local campaigns. And Della, I don't know if I have control of the slide deck, but I think you can move into the next slide. You just tell me one. Okay. And so you all can see, for many of you all who already know who what we do, um, like I said, we are um, the leader in promoting uh, bi local campaigns and getting consumers to spend their dollars locally. Um, during this time and this crisis right now, local economies have been impacted, I believe, the most. And we can see right now the need to really come together and collaborate and advocate for local business. One, uh, as I'm sure I'll get into the presentation, but I'm sure a lot of you have heard about 
you know, federal resource programs that are coming down the pipeline, which we'll get into in a second. Um, what Amoeba aims to do is to make sure that the resources that become available through your own tax dollars are disseminated directly and injected directly into the local economy. And so being a former banker myself, uh, I dealt with commercial banking for JP Morgan for five years before I got into this, into this work. And I've also have spent a lot of time working in economic development. And the one thing that I know from the previous economic meltdown is that a lot of the dollars that went out that were to support local economies, um, a lot of those dollars were soaked up and bought back through stock buybacks from major multinational corporations. And so Amoeba has primarily been the voice and the advocate for local independent businesses. And we do have a definition for that, um, which you can go to our website and, and um, learn more about. But primarily, we know and I think we have the opportunity uh, for all of us and everyone on this call to think about what we can do together that we cannot do alone. And so I know there's a lot of alliances, there's a lot of chambers, there's probably a few Main Street organizations on the call. Um, but most importantly, I know that there's a lot of local independent business owners. And the best thing that Amoeba can provide right now is a platform for us to have a voice for how we repair our economy moving forward. And so, um, but just to go through the quick bullet points, you know, what we've done historically as the Shop Indie Local campaign for the holiday season, um, we primarily have provided templates and guides for local alliances to form uh, to where they can support local independent businesses in their community. Um, we do send out a monthly, bi-monthly newsletter. It's not as consistent as I'd like, but um, with Della's help, that's gonna be a lot better. And we have an annual conference, which is really our annual one-time opportunity for us to bring together local economy leaders from across the country to talk about shared best practices and to form our agenda for the following year. And we have uh, been very successful in promoting and getting a lot of people involved in our conference that we have unfortunately have had to cancel uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. And right now we do have a tentative date uh, set for September 30th through October 2nd. We were previously going to do it in April. Uh, however, um, we've had to cancel that for obvious reasons. And right now our tentative date is for September 30th through October 2nd. Um, however, I can be honest, I'm not sure. Um, where our economy is going to be after the next two weeks. So um, more to um, go out about that. Uh, I hope that, you know, things have improved um, by, the, by that time, but the way that things are coming down the pipeline on a daily basis, it, it just doesn't seem that way. And so the opportunity is now for us to um, come together and talk about how we're going to rebuild our economy. And I have plenty of resources to share. And um, looking at the time frame, I am assuming that a lot of this information can go out to the email list of people that have uh, registered for the call. And so we do have a lot of um, resources and we'll go through a lot of that um, through this call. And um, we'll just have to do the best we can to get this to you all. And so um, I'm also sure that there's a lot of uh, alliances that are on the call right now that are doing great things, uh, such as Louisville, Portland, um, Local First Arizona, um, Austin IBA, and uh, Cambridge. I know that we're having great things come out of Boston. And so um, please feel free to reach out to us after this call about um, any type of issues you may be dealing with in your own community where you may need help and tips on kind of how to approach. And um, so looking at the slides and yes, Della, I can see the slides actually. I just saw your text come through. And so 
looking at what we want to do going forward, we think that the best thing to happen and for us to be able to facilitate is, is a, it's establishing a group of cohorts. And so we understand that we want to do more webinars moving forward and we want to establish smaller groups so we can start developing, you know, communities where people are able to kind of just share mentally what they're also going through as well. But ultimately, some of the things that we want to help with and learn through our future webinars is to um, be able to, to draft policy and uh, that could be pushed for legislation. And so we are aiming to work with the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. And I know that they have a report coming out soon or a plan to uh, attack, or not attack, but <laughs> I would say uh, propose for federal legislation. And so as we work with them, I'm sure that um, a lot more information will be coming down the pipeline. And, and so one of the things that I want uh, Amoeba to be able to offer is that after this call, we're going to be sending out a post survey, but looking at the data that we have already received from the um, original survey that we put out a couple of days ago. And Della, can you go back to that slide? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that when I went away to respond to that, I didn't realize it was showing that. Sorry. Yeah, I think, well, maybe you haven't gotten to that slide yet, but anyway. Um, so based on some of the data that we've received, yeah, here we go. You just passed it again. Yep. So looking at what we want to do, we want to establish cohorts for, you know, there's a lot of people on this call, but we know that there are industries out there that are suffering. All industries are suffering. And so we have networks to many of those industries. And I think one of the best things that we could do right now is establish um, whether we do this through Facebook live groups or, or however, or through future webinars, um, we want to establish cohorts. Maybe they are industry specific. I know that we are now in conversations with Marquette University out of um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we are looking at partnering with their student run business program to establish a series of webinars for local coffee shops across the country. And so those are uh, examples of cohorts that we want to establish. And there may be, it may be helpful for a lot of you local independent business owners to be connected with other local business owners in your industry um, no matter where they are based around the country to start sharing ideas and best practices. What we want to do is start collecting data from these conversations that we can process nationally and put into documents that we can push for legislation and, and, and that we can also use as templates to write letters to your local economic development organizations, to your local legislators, uh, to your city officials we're willing to help in doing that. And so one thing that I think had come out of establishing these cohorts is that Amoeba nationally will know uh, how to respond and how to help individual alliances and local businesses on how to approach your economic development organizations and your local officials. That will probably most likely help happen through the form of us establishing uh, letter templates and um, you know proposal templates that we will launch on our website or we can form these cohorts and share that information um, through those smaller groups. So that's the reason for the cohort collaboration. And we'll put more information out about that after this call and we'll have a post survey that goes out that um, will ask for you all's feedback on whether we should do that industry specific or whether we should do that by alliance or, or, or however, we haven't fully thought that through yet. Uh, but ultimately, that's the type of advocacy support that we want to see in our local communities because it's really going to be up to us and other networks um, to really create that voice that's going to make it um, known and make people understand why it's so important to stress and promote the impact of spending your dollars locally. 
uh, a lot of us are not multinational corporations uh, that are able to have employees work from home. And so um, I worry about how we are going to rebound from this economy or, you know, from this meltdown that I see coming. But it's also an opportunity. I think about possibilities more than I think about where we're deficient. And I think the possibilities is us coming together to figure out what we can do together that we can't do individually in our silos. And so I'm hoping that this crisis allows us to break the silos that I've seen in the local economy movement. And, and, and so more on that later before I get on that soapbox. But uh, part of what we can do with these cohorts is establish conversations with experts. And so Amoeba has a pretty wide reach to organizations like the ILSR, like the American Sustainable Business Council, such as uh, Independent We Stand, a lot of organizations that are, that are focused um, on sustainable local economies. And so um, between us, we should be able, for example, to get someone from the SBA on the phone to talk to specific communities. And so that's again, why I think it's important to establish cohorts so we can better understand of how to um, create uh, consistent messaging. Also, I want to talk about, um, I'm an Episcopalian and I'm very much involved in the Episcopal community here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And Christ Church Cathedral, for example, in Cincinnati, Ohio, has a $70 million endowment. And I've been working with them over the years on how to invest that money into local economies. I suggest that um, you all work with your faith-based communities in, in your local towns as well. They do have a role to play in local businesses being able to survive. And, and, and so I am willing to talk with anyone individually on different approaches and steps to take in developing grant proposals to your local churches. Um, so that is a something that's not really in this presentation, but it's also something that I'll put out when we develop these cohorts. I also think that um, looking at the bottom of this slide that you all are currently looking at, one of the alternative funding sources that we can begin to look at and that I think Amoeba can facilitate is crowdfunding. And so you all have probably all heard about, you know, uh, gift card programs and different things that we can do to keep local businesses open. But I also think that, um, you know, I was on a conversation with my uh, friend from Marquette University, and he said that um, through various conversations, there was a individual who donated $1,500 to a business that he has never um, done business with. And so when you look at the alternative funded sources such as crowdfunding, I think with the coalition that we can build through our cohorts, we would be able to really extend our reach and develop crowdfunding campaigns, let's just say for local coffee shops or for local toy stores, whatever it is. Um, I want to hear from you all about whether or not you think that could work in your local communities, because with a national reach, we can de potentially develop an alternative fund um, through these crowdfunding sources. And we'll also work with um, crowdfunded platforms such as Kickstarter and some other regional ones that I know of that could help us in that reach. And maybe we create a deal where we get them to lower their interest rates for different various crowdfunding platforms. And so, um, more to come on that, but that's one idea that Amoeba is looking into doing through this kind of cohort strategy that we are going to put out. And so Della, I think you can move to the next slide. And so Della, I think this is where I turn it over to you all and we're at 327. So uh, sorry for taking up too much time on that. No, thank you, Derek. So what you heard from Derek is, is an indication there's a lot developing, there's a lot being thought of. Some of this has been under consideration for a while and some of it's brand new. So 
as, as we're all experiencing in our daily lives, we're in a moment of flux. What we want to do for the next few minutes, and we may run a hair over uh, the hour. Um, if you need to bounce off, please feel free to do that. We're going to do a quick overview, very, very high level overview of some emerging best practices. We, and, and that's not going to go into exhaustive detail because, you know, at this point, going into exhaustive detail would be a three-day seminar. But we'll hit some of the high, high trends that appear to be coming out and a few of the really good ideas that are developing, and we'll follow up to everybody with more information. We also wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to hear from Rebecca. Uh, she has some extraordinary um, perspective both from her years in this work, from the fact that Austin has been going through this before anybody else uh, because of the cancellation of South by Southwest and the impact that that has on the Austin economy and because of her own experience having been through disasters previously. We will endeavor to leave some time for some Q&A. Unfortunately, with as many people as we've got on here, we're gonna have to do that through the chat room. We may not be able to answer everybody's comments right now, but we will follow up with uh, probably a Google Doc that will have, you know, basically crowdsourced answers to many of those questions. So as Derek said, this is a beginning, not an end, and not a not a be all and end all. And then we'll wrap up with a little um, refresher on some next steps. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, and because we had to switch to a technology that we hadn't used before. So we're discovering a few sort of little unexpected things as we go. One of which is that I can't see your questions while I'm giving this presentation. Because if I flip back, you don't see the slides. And if you don't see the slides, then I can't see what I'm talking about. So um, we'll put that in the lessons learned bucket. Um, but what we wanted to focus on was what we've been learning so far. And as I said, I'm gonna give you a very high level on that. When it comes to uh, this work, um, you know, there's been a lot of information that's been flying around. It's been furious. It's been confusing. It's been overwhelming. Um, and there's been a few different sort of repositories of good information, not so good information, questionable information, really great information. And, and folks who are involved in this, not just us, but all throughout, are really still working on trying to sort this out. So this is again going to be very high level. But what in what we're discovering is that for these kinds of organizations, independent business alliances, for chambers of commerce, for Main Street, for economic development agencies, for folks who just have an informal role of leadership within their local economy. There's a lot of things that we can be doing. And I put up four basic categories here. Manage, helping businesses manage new issues, helping them find new ways to promote themselves or pivot, helping connect and communicate, and helping with emergency financial help. And I know, and, and we did a survey, I showed you the slides, a couple of the slides from that briefly while Derek was talking. I know people are not, everybody's looking for the financial answer right now, and those are complicated and piecemeal and incomplete. But there's a few places where we can start on that. But I want to emphasize that there's a lot that we can do other than directly putting money in people's pockets, although we know that is extraordinarily important. Some of the other things we can do include helping them manage new issues. So finding health information in a language that you don't speak. If you have employees who, who speak a language that is very different from your own, that can be very difficult for some places. We're finding resources, and this will be in the resource information that we send out. We're starting to find places where you can find good, reliable health information to share with employees, customers, et cetera. Um, 
the CDC has checklists for cleaning protocols. There are, there's information now on the specific types of disinfectants to use. We've seen a lot of communities change, get their city governments to change parking rules so that people can park in front of an establishment that is carry out only now and be able to park there without that little additional friction of wondering if that's an okay place to park. And one, one thing that came up was that for people who are potentially going to be eligible for state or federal um, financial assistance, sometimes their record keeping is not is good enough for them, but may be a challenge, may present a challenge for them when it comes to applying for any of those kind of programs in the future. So helping them understand what they need to do to be able to tighten up their documentation, particularly when it comes to financial losses, product that's not being moved, et cetera, that becomes really crucial. We can help businesses promote themselves. And some businesses are really awesome at this. And we all know businesses within our specific communities who just knock it out of the park in terms of promotions every day. But a lot of businesses, you know, they're, they're as stunned and confused and preoccupied as, every, as, as the rest of us are right now. So how are ways that we can help them get their own message out. So here's a few. The, the picture that says open downtown and has the asterisk, that's actually a window cling that's being offered in this by the Downtown Date Partnership, which is in Ohio. Um, and the businesses can mark, you know, are we doing only curbside pickup? Are we doing only delivery? And it's right there in the window and also on their website. Um, the item at the bottom, is a social media campaign that actually was started by Toast. It's got a hashtag. You can take a look at that. Again, that reference will be in the, the materials. But that's a national campaign to encourage buying gift cards. A lot of us has been talking gift cards. This is, this, this is an opportunity to take away a little bit of the friction around buying gift cards in some cases and up that visibility to the next level. But I have to say that this one, and I don't know if Jennifer or Jamie are on this call, I gotta say this is one of my favorites so far. So uh, downtown Mansfield, which again, these just happen to be Ohio examples and I'm not trying to be Ohio specific here. Um, downtown Mansfield put out social distancing bingo, which has specific activities, that are CDC approved in social distancing. Um, and they've been having great fun with this in encouraging people you know, to do something like get, a, get takeout or take a walk in the park. And it's, it's, it's just a good, a good way to put a positive um, a spin on a tough situation. And remind folks that, you know, these places exist and are open and are waiting for you. Another really important role that local advocates and local organizations can play is to up that connecting and communicating. So Milwaukee Local First has a standing coffee and connections, which is just a, a get together that they do on a monthly basis. They moved it to Zoom. So everybody is, is participating with their own cup of coffee, having that conversation on Zoom right now. A lot of folks are using Zoom, face, excuse me, Facebook Live for some audiences, Instagram Live might be a better, a, a better avenue. We're starting to see some webinars that are less structured than this one, that are really sort of put a couple of people who may have knowledge online and ask me anything. Um, and that and that tends to be a format that is flexible. It's really good for kind of getting an initial sense of what are people concerned about. 
Um, Cambridge Local First is doing an event that, that from my understanding is sort of along those lines tonight, um, again, through Zoom. So Zoom turns out to be a very easy uh, platform. I think a lot of people out here have probably been using that. Um, it does have a limit on how many people can participate, um, which was our problem today. But, you know, that ends up being a really great way to sort of do a group call. Um, call trees are a method that I haven't seen. I'm also Episcopalian. Um, that's just dumb luck. We're, you know, Amoeba does not have a secret Episcopal handshake. Um, but we, we've we seen churches go to sort of a call tree function where different people volunteer to call on a regular basis, five, six, 10 other individuals and check in on them, connect with them, say, hey, how's it going? Commiserate with that. That takes some of the burden off of you as the individual point of contact. And finally, we're starting to see some mutual aid collaborations, whether that's uh, shared resources or um, some of the work that's been happening around uh, making sure children are fed while schools are closed. Some good stuff out there. Finally, when it comes to em that emergency financial help, I think most of us have heard by now that the SBA is going to be uh, preparing a low interest loan. The concern that's been raised by a lot of people is yes, that's great, but it's gonna take a long time before that money is in the pockets of people who need it. So what can we do in the meantime when they're taking that cash flow hit right now? A few other ideas. Um, we are seeing some foundations accelerating their grant making process, especially programs that are involved with the arts. If they can distribute that money three months early, that could make a big difference. So that's a piece that we can lobby for. Um, I discovered through the course of intensive research over the last couple of days that every state has sort of obscure programs that most people don't know about, but that can be financial benefits. So for example, Ohio has a shared work program that basically allows you to, instead of laying people off to cut back their hours in exchange for getting a prorated um, amount of unemployment assistance. Um, there, there, are organiz there are industry specific organizations that have mutual aid type of programs one is the Book Industry Charitable Foundation, which will actually give small grants, small support to, to book sellers, um, and particularly their employees, if employees have to be laid off. And there's been several organizations that have developed sort of, um, you know, charitable tipping sites for service workers. This is just an example of one of those. Uh, this is, and this again will be in the resources. This is from Chattanooga. It was developed for Chattanooga, but it's now being made available as a platform for folks all over the country. So this Chattanooga service industry is basically, you take a drink at home, you can tip a bartender or a server anywhere else. and randomly generated, they tell you who your particular tip is gonna to go to, and you go ahead and tip them. So again, this is Chattanooga specific right now, but they're in the process of rolling it out for other uh, other cities. And we'll have a link to the, um, the, sign in, the sign up in the materials that we send out. So a couple of points to wrap up, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Rebecca. So we know that it's a handful right now. We know we can't change everything. We can't protect everyone. We can't, we can't just make it all okay. And that's really difficult when you're in the business of helping people. But there are a lot of things that we can do right now to help. And we've talked about a few of those briefly and we'll, We'll talk about that much more in the coming couple of weeks. But most importantly, from my perspective, I think 
the great opportunity that we have, you know, they, they say that every, um, every disaster has some benefit. And that's hard to believe when you're in the middle of it. But the potential exists here for us to really change how we think about and how our communities and our nation thinks about our local economies. We know that people love them. We're discovering right now, and they're discovering right now how much they appreciate them and what a big hole in their life it leaves when businesses that they rely on are gone. And I think that's something to build on. But I'm gonna hand that over to Rebecca because she has some really great things to say about that. So Rebecca, I can show them the slide or I can kick it over and let them see your bright and shining face. <laughs> Let's start with the slide. All right. And then anytime you want me to, to kick it off, you just say the word. Okay. Uh, go ahead and show the next slide. Um, right. well, I'm, so go ahead. I'm so sorry. I missed a slide. Okay. This slide was just a point of the things that we can do starting right now and a big one of which is to curate information, to be careful about not just hitting people with fire hose, which is what us professionals are getting hit with, but to curate. So I'm gonna leave the rest of that be, I think it's self-evident. Um, and Rebecca, now she's all yours. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, um, let's go to, go ahead and go, there we are. Um, the first thing is, is that I'm gonna build a lot on what Della just said. There are three categories of things that we can do right now. One is to funnel information to our businesses, but funnel it in a curated way. Everybody's a little overwhelmed right now. So if we can uh, look at that information that's come from all of us, can is this okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, it garbled a little bit, but I think you're all right. Okay. Um, to funnel that information to our businesses in whatever way we have contact with them, but curate it in a way that we are giving them distilled good information. Um, there's a lot of information flying around that heads to websites that aren't quite developed yet. So for a business owner who's overwhelmed, they try and go to that website and there's actually nothing there for them to do yet. There will be. So holding back on those kinds of things. Um, give them information all in one place. We've got uh, that in a form of a blog on our website, which we update regularly, but also send out as an email. So sharing that information, finding resources for them, uh, just helping them through this so that they don't have to face it all alone. The second area where we can be particularly impactful is to help them communicate, help them communicate with their customers, with their employees. And a lot of the things that AIBA is doing here, we were thrust into by the cancellation of South by Southwest, which is a $350 million impact on the city. So uh, the creative community, the musicians, the bars, certainly a lot of the restaurants and shops just got hit with a huge tidal wave uh, in the course of one week. And now that's filtering out to everyone else, but it did put us in a position to jump quickly and create some things for them. Um, we've created posters for them, for their doors to say, here are the things that this business is doing to keep you safe for those businesses that are open. Social media, giving them that social media element as well. Anything that helps them and relieves something that they would otherwise have to do. Um, it's not that we have a magic wand or are reinventing the wheel in any way. It's stuff that if they have the time and mental capacity right now to sit down and think about, they could all come up with themselves, but they don't. So those kinds of helpful things of here's one thing that an alliance or an association can take off your plate. Um, how to be in business in this new world. Um, here's a new way of doing business. It includes... Uh, curb service, ordering online, uh, pickup service, delivery service. Do you have the ability to sell gift cards and where we're doing a play it forward campaign? Um, 
how can your business do business when you can't come closer to six than six feet to anyone? So don't make them think of those things, help them think of those things. We're doing a corresponding part that uh, educates the public about this. So, okay, we know that now six feet away, these stores aren't open, but you can still do business with them. So there's a mirrored campaign of here's how you do it. You order online, you pick it up, you, you know, you can have delivery, you can buy a gift card, all of those things. But telling people what to do sometimes is a huge relief. So that's a large part of the campaign that we're doing in Austin. I love it that um, Waterloo Records, which is one of our most beloved music centers stores in town, is doing curb service for music. And so it's not just restaurants. It's all kinds of services are going online. Help people see that we're like a lot of independent business alliances across the country. We are developing a database that in 36 hours, I now have, I think, 75 businesses on it to tell the public about who's doing what. So you want to still do business with your favorite local business. Here's how you can do it. Um, help them with marketing, social media campaigns. Uh, we're doing all of the above. But the third category is where what I really want to talk about, because I think that there is a need that often gets lost when we look at the the information and the data and the marketing and all that. And that's the emotional need. Uh, local business owners are oftentimes very alone. It's one of the things that independent business alliances are able to do is bring owners together in a group of their peers. Well, we can't be together right now, but we can in other ways. They, uh, they have all the same fears that we all have and all the same concerns. I can pay my employees or my rent at the end of the month. How do you make a decision like that? Um, well, how long is this going to last? Where is this going to go? Uh, so a large part of it is giving them a place to vent, to voice those concerns, to know that someone is there listening and trying to help them. They can't talk to their employees about this stuff. They oftentimes have no one else that they can say, you know, here's what I'm really afraid of. Um, we did a survey and I would say it's a week and a half ago and it's already obsolete. But uh, I love to give our members uh, comment boxes because, boy, do they fill it out. It's awesome. But <laughs> it was a place where they could really talk about their fears in a safe place. And they came through with all of their fears. And that that in and of itself, giving them a shoulder to cry on is a uh, really important element. But it's looking at what else can we possibly do for the community, for the businesses and something else that uh, Della brought up that's so true. If there's one one thing, there are many things I hope we can actually carry forward from this time uh, disease free. But one of the things is I'm in Austin, Texas. I have never seen this community rise to the occasion like it has here, not through any disaster, not through anything. People helping other people, people caring, everyone reaching out, doing the right thing, supporting each other. If we can maintain that kind of community into the future, what an amazing world we'll have. So uh, let, let's recognize that that is, that that caring can move forward. Um, the last thing I want to uh, point out is that the fourth thing we can do uh, is for our businesses, but it's also for us. When this passes at will, it will be a wave that does pass. The economy will hit, need to hit the resort, reset button. When that happens, we have the opportunity to redirect economic development to local economies and local business instead of all of the big business structure like it is now. It's fascinating that I'm seeing a split that's occurring organically already. And that split is we just gave all these companies big bailouts in the last catastrophe. Uh, now they've had big, huge tax incentives, which they 
spent and didn't uh, do what they needed to do with. And so now they're asking for more money. We need to direct those efforts to local business. So when the next catastrophe happens and it will, something will happen in the next five years or 10 years or 20 years or 30 years that our local economies are stronger than they are now and that they are set up to be far more resilient than they are now and that our government, that our economic uh, structure, that indeed our entire platform focuses on supporting those localized entities. And we'll always have big business. I'm not anti big business, but for too long, this country has focused only on big business and considered small business. I don't even, I, I really don't even like that term. I like local business because small can be derogatory. So looking at local business as the filigree that fills in between the big businesses, that needs to flip. That perspective totally needs to flip. And we will have the opportunity when this is over to make that flip. And that's to me, one of the silver linings that we'll have uh, in the coming months and the coming years. And I hope that um, that we can all get there and that we all become healthier local economies. Well, how's that for, uh, for, for a wrap up? Um, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I think those are words that we need to hear. Well, I'm going to step away from the presentation for just a, a couple of minutes, and I apologize. And now I dropped my my computer, so I'm going to turn my computer back on and lose the the sharing for a second. You're seeing half my face. That's always a good thing. Um, I'm going to take a quick look through. If you have questions that you have not posted. I had a platform for my computer set up and that promptly fell as soon as I started trying to do anything. Um, if you have questions, um, go ahead and, and pop them into the box right now. And we'll give you a, give you a second. Um, somebody is pointing out Mary Alice Scott at Portland. Um, saw a hashtag that was hashtag too small to fail. And that's pretty awesome. Um, there's a lot of hashtags floating around right now, um, but definitely a hashtag campaign is pretty great. And that one's pretty good while we're at it. Um, I'm seeing that there is a com commercial eviction moratorium in San Francisco. And that's also a um, you look in the in the uh, chat, you'll see um, comments on on that. And again, we'll we'll make sure everybody gets this in a process that's easier to to read. Um, thank you, Lori. Identified that when we talked before about IL, ILSR, that's the Institute for Local Self Reliance. That's an organization that is largely involved in advocacy. So they focus primarily on um on policy um let's see who else we got here all right um so rachel asks i'd like guidance on whether to close my business is it okay to stay open if six feet of space can be maintained um i don't have an answer to that um i think a lot of that depends um, Rebecca, if you have any thoughts on that, and, or Derek, I'd, I'd love to have you chime in. Um, I don't think that's, not, I think a lot of that depends on what kind of business you're in. Yeah, Sandra just asked uh, what kind of business, and I think that makes a lot of, of difference. It also matters what state you're in, in Ohio, for example, and again, I live in Ohio, so that's just the example I have. Um, having... If, if you're in in the, the hair salon space, for example, it doesn't matter how close they are now, um, they've gotta be apart. 
Uh, Rachel says it's a co-working space. Um, again, I would double check rules in your area. I know in where we live, it's um, it's more focused. Can so, I try yeah, to that? Uh, a lot of people in Austin are doing things like their business by appointment. So they've gone, people who normally wouldn't have an appointment type business are doing appointments or they're letting only two or four or six people in the door at a time. Um, the appointment model seems to be working well for quite a few people. Obviously you can't accommodate the number of customers you might have in the past, but you can keep your door open and can accommodate customers on an appointment basis. Della, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Derek. I know one of the questions <clears throat> from Stephanie of South Carolina, um, the question is, do any other states have access to any type of insurance policies that allow for claims at a disaster for losses other than loans? I know that that's one of the things that we're working on is to um, have some type of program or funding that allows insurance companies to cover full coverage for business interruption insurance. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I've seen some stuff that ILSR is putting together on that end too, but um, we'll definitely combine kind of what we're learning and we'll, we'll put that out to everybody who's joined this call. Great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, the challenge here is that everything is happening really quickly. Um, is, is that, Eric, is that typically called business interruption insurance? You know, this is one of the things that Boston, uh, SBN Massachusetts, that I've heard from Laurie. So I don't think it's, I think it's a policy that I don't think it necessarily stands as of right now. But I know some states are, are looking into that. Um, but I, again, that's one of the policy coalition initiatives that we could put together. And so I actually, I mean, I, I think it's a very valid and good question for us to kind of work with our partners to see if anybody's really working on that. Okay, good. And Derek's kind of the, the wizard on the, on the public policy side. So, um, you know, he's, he's gonna be the great guy to be having those conversations. Um, While you're on that, uh, Della, um, Laurie, I know it's on this call, but I'm also going to mention kind of five steps that we're looking at kind of on a federal level. And one is to maximize unemployment benefits through the federal government assistance. So a lot of that now is like 60% of your income for people who are applying for unemployment. And so one of the policies to push is for 100% of salary with a maximum move from 800 a week to at least 1500 a week. And so we also want to talk about eliminating the one week waiting period, which I think is already being done in Massachusetts. Also to extend time for benefits until the coronavirus crisis is over. I think it's actually gonna need to be extended even far past when the crisis is over. Um, something like that I think should probably go for a couple of years, but temporarily eliminate all unemployment insurance payments from small um, from small and mid-sized businesses, but provide federal assistance to local businesses to cover 100% of their employees' health insurance, offer substantial direct cash infusions, and major expansions of the Federal Disaster Relief Fund for local independent businesses. The insurance thing that I was talking about, um, but also join the moratorium that we're starting to see on evictions that's also for local independent businesses, foreclosures, utility shutoffs, and auto or uh, equipment repossessions. Because um, we know there's a lot of local businesses involved in delivery services already that are, are probably have car notes and things like that. So I'll turn it back to you, sorry. No, there's, no, that's good to hear. So, so that's the things that, that Derek just described, to be clear, that those are policy recommendations that Amoeba and other agent organizations are looking at, you know, advocating for it. That's not in process yet. So I just want to make sure that 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 folks are clear on on that. Um, I'm taking another quick look through the comments. Uh, just to, and, and a lot of, 
you know, again, the, the, the chat log will be available. We'll make that available after this. It might take us a day to get it out because we've got to learn how to do it. Um, but there's some really good specific local insights in here that I, I, I would really encourage everybody to take a look through. Um, Rick, for example, is talking about having a key communicator network. So they've kind of identified points of contact. Um, we've got some references on blogs. If you have a blog, um, we can't necessarily see what your full organization name is on this chat. So make sure that you put the name of any blog that you're using in the chat box here, okay? Um, does anybody have any other urgent questions? It's 4.03 right now, Della. Um, just real quick, I would like to uh, thank everyone who spent time joining this call. If you know of any other webinars going on out there, please feel free to email me. I am also in the process of curating data. And so I am open and willing to, you know, join any webinars that, that are out there. But we will be putting together a list of resources, like Della said. And um, please feel free to reach out to me for any other reason especially if you need any help in reaching out to your local officials around what is going on locally in your communities. And um, I'm also gonna be sending out more information about the cohorts that we want to establish. And so we can have a community of small groups that are focused on specific uh, industry initiatives. So um, with that, I just wanna thank everybody and then I'll turn, turn it back to you, Della. You can close us out. Awesome, thank you. Um, Again, we'll, we'll keep this open for a little while so that people can continue to put notes in because it looks like that's been really, really valuable. Um, but just to reiterate, so here's the next steps. These are the next steps that um, Amoeba is going to be leading, that I, Wise Economy Workshop, will be leading, and that other organizations that we've named and that we haven't named um, are, are going to be participating in. So we've talked about those collaboration cohorts. Um, we will have a Google Doc of the chat along with the presentation. And I believe there will be a video, an audio recording or a, a, a recording basically of this presentation. Don't quote me on that yet, because again, it's a new, new platform to all of us. And yeah, we're learning as we go here. Um, but everything that we've got available, the slide deck, any audio or video that we have, and um, the chat log and the Q&A, the, the unanswered questions that come up, we'll have all of that available for everybody who's been a participant in this. Feel free to share it to anybody. Um, we are working on a resource database um, that's partly being done by us, that's partly being done by partners. There's still some discussion over what format is best for that and we might end up because things are messy um, we might end up with a couple of different versions floating around but we'll do the best we can to give you a a real solid database of information and as we indicated amoeba you know derek's new with amoeba i'm my involvement is even newer we have been working on plans to roll out new webinars and new online learning and sharing that we showed you before um, and right now we're just trying to roll all that faster and faster and faster. So um, we will try not to spam you too badly, but we will also be trying to come up with ways for all of us to learn and grow together. And finally, if you're not a member of Amoeba and this sounds like something good, I might as well make a plug. Um, you can find Lots of information, including some of the resources that we identified at amoeba.net forward slash join dash amoeba. Um, again, I'm Della Rucker. Um, many of you know me from the Wise Economy Workshop. Um, you've heard from Derek Peebles, who's the executive director of Amoeba, and Rebecca Medashon. I think she dropped off, but. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and she is the uh, executive director of the Austin Independent Business Alliance. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. 
Um, I'm going to leave this up. I'm going to um, turn off my microphone, but we'll leave the chat function open for about the next half an hour or so. So feel free to add any other questions or comments as, as we go through. Thanks again to everybody. And as I, you know, have told uh, my audiences for many years, uh, time to go get them. So uh, be safe, everybody. Be well. And uh, we'll talk soon.